What are the white lies that the 16 personalities often tell? ESTP and ESFP. I'll get it done tomorrow. I've seen both of these types do this, so I'll bunch them together. ESTPs and ESFPs are ultra confident in the moment, but either their mood might change when it comes time to do something, or they might simply get distracted by a more juicy and alluring activity or opportunity. This is a hyperbolic way to describe it, but I think it's helpful. I've heard both of these types relate to the notion of seeing their future selves as being less real than their current selves. To be fair, that is probably the most rational way to view it, not least because our future selves are not guaranteed. But this mindset permeates through any claims they might make about the future and what they might want from it. Despite being possessed of immense belief in their own capabilities, they might find it difficult to project that confidence forward into the future with any level of certainty. INFJ. I love that movie too. INFJs are emotionally osmotic creatures. If they're not careful, then they can absorb the emotions of the people around them too much. As I've often said before, they're typically more adept at reading, analysing and understanding other people's emotions than they are with their own. To a certain extent, it's like sacrificing internal focus for external focus. Adopting the interests, preferences and loves of the people around them by osmosis or sometimes intentionally is therefore something they are susceptible to. They can lose themselves to that. So a white lie that is common for INFJs is claiming that they also like something just because someone close to them also likes it. And it might not always actually be a lie because they might even feel like they actually do like it as a result. ENFJ. It's not you, it's me. Certain types are perpetual patcher-uppers, carrying a seemingly unending case of psychological band-aids around with them, ready to be deployed in service of keeping the peace, dishing out emotional comfort, and mediating interpersonal melees. ENFJs will often choose to be the bigger person when things get heated, taking the path that spares the other person's ego, needing to be dented, or feelings hurt. They can do this to a fault. So, if you ever hear an ENFJ saying, it's not you, it's me, then it's definitely you. ENTP. It's a fact. ENTPs, should they be inclined towards such deviousness, can even make people doubt things that they know to be true. So lying is something that comes, if not easily to them, then certainly without a huge struggle. ENTPs can easily acquire rhetorical renown for their skills in conversation and communication. Although their abilities are not limited to this area, words are typically effortless for them. Sometimes a bit too much so. Over the course of a debate, an ENTP might, in their enthusiasm, overstep and cite a source that might not, how to say, actually exist. This is not because they're trying to win at all costs. Usually it's either a hyperbolic statement or a way to show hypocrisy on the opposing side. If they can bring up a fact, so to speak, that makes the other person concede that there's a contradiction in their argument, then it's fair game. ISTJ and ESTJ. This is the best way to do it. I'm going to bunch the two STJ types together for this one. One of the consequences of appearing confident, stable, steadfast and strong is that people assume a level of certainty from you that you might not actually possess. Both the STJ types naturally understand the benefit of just getting on with it. As a result, sometimes it's easier to just tell people, listen, this is the best way to do it. Let's get moving and get working. So that's a white lie that they'll often employ in service of keeping things moving and on the right track. Sometimes it's better to shake people out of their inaction and passivity because there's a job and it needs to be done. This video is sponsored by You're My Type, an app that makes finding friends and dating more meaningful by using personality types to match people. Check it out if you want to connect, chat and meet with people or just enjoy the memes. It's available on both iOS and Android and is completely free to download. ISTP and INTP. You make a good point. As time goes on, both of these types will catch on to the fact that being right actually counts for surprisingly little in many situations. If you offend someone's ego or phrase something in a way that could be perceived as an attack, then people will shut down and be completely unreceptive to whatever point you're making. Eventually, ISTPs and INTPs will incorporate softening statements into their speech, ones designed to avoid the annoying emotionality that can infect discussions and stop people getting down to any kind of truth or progress. 
So if you hear either of these types saying, you make a good point, either you actually did, or they think you made a terrible point, but luckily for you, they're about to save you with a healthy dose of logic and reason. ISFJ. No, it fits you perfectly. ISFJs, if they are going to lie, will typically do so to spare the blushes of the people close to them. This can seem disingenuous, and certain types would definitely prefer having the cold, harsh truth given to them whenever possible, but there is a wisdom to how ISFJs go about it. Sometimes people need to be nurtured and have their psychological hands held. If a little white lie allows that person to keep momentum and not be slowed down by the curse of self-doubt and analysis paralysis, then it's a greater good to soften the blow or just avoid it altogether. ESFJ. I swear, it really happened that way. ESFJs are, whether it is at a small one-on-one -on -one scale or in front of the masses, people who have a performative approach to storytelling. They want the other person to have a good experience. Sometimes that desire can supplant the facts of what actually happened. Exaggeration in storytelling for the purposes of entertaining and cajoling people is a white lie that ESFJs can fall into. If they can give someone a better experience by tweaking the facts, then that seems like a small sin in the grand scheme of of things. ENTJ. I got 103% on the test. Deal with it. The ENTJ white lie would be, more often than not, an exaggeration of achievement. One of the ironies of this is that often, their actual achievements are impressive enough without needing to add anything to them. But in their eyes, if you can bump things up a few percentage points, then that's not the worst thing ever. After all, if you've put in that much work, then you almost deserve it. They might at times even go as far as to claim they've already achieved something that they haven't yet, simply because they know they will eventually actually achieve it. So why wait to brag? INTJ. I don't care. This white lie could be thought of in two different ways. The first is the stereotype of them being cold machines who are impervious to being offended. To be fair, they are far less offendable than most types, if not all other types. But at the same time, they are not as immune to it as the stereotypes sometimes make out. The second is the implication that they don't care about things more generally. This one is kind of comical since INTJs care extremely deeply about pretty much anything, everything, and everyone that they're interested in. They are, as I've said before, deeply passionate people, often driven by what amount to fiery emotional motivations. ISFP and INFP. I'm fine. It's not that these types are typically not fine, but rather that this white lie is indicative of the gulf between what they feel internally and what they can convey about those feelings to other people. It gets to the point where it's simply easier for them to say, I'm fine, instead of trying to craft verbal paintings of their emotional landscape to someone who might not even be that receptive to hearing it anyway. So if you want to avoid the I'm fine from ISFPs and INFPs, you're going to have to dig a little bit deeper. ENFP. I'll be there. ENFPs can have something of a flaky reputation. I think this can be because they are ideas people. Or should I say, people who derive great enjoyment from ideas, sometimes without ever needing to have those ideas manifested in reality. If you make plans with an ENFP, then the idea is going to be very appealing to them, and they may just say yes as a result. However, when the time comes to follow through with those plans, they might not be as into it. For the non-flaky ENFPs, that I know, and you know who you are, uh, my bad. My personal white lie is that subscribing makes a big difference to the channel. I have no idea whether that's true, but it is greatly valued by me and probably doesn't hurt. 